Hello, this is Capricorn Tigress, Adrian Igo from Astrology, A Look Inside, coming to you, Taurus, with the reading for September. Happy September to Taurus. This is actually a positive month for Taurus and for Capricorns because, uh, you know, uh, Virgo is of the earth element and we myself, Capricorn, and you, Taurus, are of the earth element. And so this should be a positive month for us earth signs because it is a harvest month and it is a time for us to harvest what we have put forth up until this point. So let's go through and look at where some of the planets are and how this is going to affect some of you, Taurus, uh, those with Taurus sun, Taurus rising, and Taurus moons, moons. And so I actually am technically reading for myself. <laughs> I've got a Taurus moon. So let's start with the beginning of the month. You know, one of the things I want to really point out is that on the 2nd of September, that Venus goes into the pre-retrograde shadow. And what I mean by that is that it's preparing uh, us, uh, you know, Venus for that retrograde, which is going to happen, uh, you know, later on, because uh, it, it's actually going into, um, Venus will be going into Scorpio on the 9th of, of, um, of September. Um, but Venus is going to retrograde on October 5th. And so everything that happens throughout the month of September, from the 2nd of September through that retrograde, you know, you're kind of in that rebounds. This is a time of rebound. So if like, you know, if you're someone who is a Taurus or you're really heavily influenced by Venus, you know, when Venus is in that, that shadow, that pre-retrograde shadow, I just think, you know, those relationships are just their rebounds. They're they're, they're bound to, they're boundary, <laughs> you know. So you know, it's we. How do you control when you fall in love? You know, it's hard to do that. But be aware that during this time, September second through October fifth, you know, you're in that pre-retrograde shadow. October fifth, it's going to retrograde. So you know. You'll find yourself repeating or having to repeat or find that you're in a rebound or something like that. So just be aware of that. I just thought I would share that with you today. Now, Mercury enters Virgo on the 5th. And um, that is in your solar 5th house. And so the emphasis mentally would be on, uh, you know, things like children and taking chances and risks. Uh, and and uh, I always think of gambling when I think of the fifth house, but children is, is really big. Creative pursuits, because, you know, sometimes children aren't physical children, but they're creative children. And so, yeah, that too. So you might be envisioning children or something like that. Um, also, um, What was I going to say about the fifth house? Because there is more emphasis on that. Well, of course, the sun is in the fifth house because it's the time of Virgo. So, you know, up until the, the sun goes into Libra, which is not until the 22nd, we're in the time of Virgo and Mercury is there. The sun is there. And on the 9th of, um, of, of September, the new moon is going to be there in your fifth house of taking chances and and taking risks and gambling and children you know i i wouldn't when there's new moon there's the possibility especially when it's in the solar fifth house i just keep thinking there's the possibility of pregnancies or you know children or you know new birth something new that's being created right now and it's it should be beautiful and a harvest moon so that should be a wonderful experience for you, Taurus. Now, um, once the, um, I just wanted to say something else. That same day on the 9th, Venus enters Scorpio. 
So I, I just wanted to make sure I, I mentioned that it enters Scorpio, which is your solar seventh house. So it, things should be pleasant with you and your partner. It, it should be a positive experience. I, you know, I don't see any negative there with that because even though it, Venus would technically be opposing Taurus, it's your ruling sign and it's in your seventh house of your, your partnerships, your marriage, your business partnerships, other people that you deal with or close to. So I can see that being pleasant and sociable and just a really pleasant, good time. Um, of course, as I said, though, remember that Venus is in its ray, like pre-retrograde shadow. I just, you know, the sad thing is I, the, the, I don't, the thought that you would start something and then have to redo it again after the retrograde is over is heartbreaking because that's September 2nd, that's all of September, and, and it's going to probably take up most of October. So let's hope that whatever you put your heart forward to, that it's all going to be in a positive um, and uplifting light. It looks really good there. So on the 10th, Mars enters Aquarius. And Aquarius is up at your 10th house. And so you're going to have emphasis in the area of your career. And that bodes really well for, you know, maybe doing well with your boss or your whatever work that you do or career that you have, your reputation uh, with others and the image that you have. It should all be very um, well out there. I mean, you should really be able to promote yourself and push yourself after the after the 10. I could see you really being able to be a force in the area of your career. Now you don't want to be overly aggressive in in the area of your career or scary. <laughs> Cuz Mars can go over the top and you really want to avoid going over the top when Mars is up in the 10th house like that. But it should be a really positive experience. It's finally direct again, and it's in it's in Aquarius, and it's making a forward positive motion, and it should be good all around for all people involved, in, even though it may square some Taurus, but it's up at the top of your chart, and that's a very positive thing. Now, also, um, I want to mention that there's going to probably be a really nice trine between, um, you know, that early degrees of Mars um, and the sun and Mercury, because the sun um, or Mercury enters Libra on the 21st and the sun enters uh, Libra on the 22nd. And those are going to end up forming uh, a trine um, with um this Mars, probably. They move a little, you know, faster. So anyway, that, that should be interesting because that's your sixth house. So that sixth house and 10th house, that's your career, your work. That's very, very good. Um, so hopefully you'll, you'll be able to take advantage of that because it's finally going in a positive motion and you can get off any projects that you might have needed to get started and you can actually get those going in a really positive direction. And that, that, that makes me excited. And you know what else makes me excited? The fact that we've got Merc, um, Saturn going direct up in Capricorn up on the 6th. We got Pluto going direct up in Capricorn on the 30th of September. These are in your solar ninth house of like learning and education and, you know, things like uh, things that have to do with the, the law and, and politics and, and spirituality and just your in-laws, all those things, all of those things are going to go positive um, or at least go direct. They'll start moving in a forward direction. Sorry, you guys, I had an itch. <laughs> It'll start moving in a forward direction. And that is a very good thing. And so um, if anything has been stalled, uh, in the area of like travel or spirituality or law, if you've had any type of um, things had to do with the, the justice system or education or anything like that, um, you know, because Saturn's been 
retrograde, I think since like April or something. So now it's all going to go forward again. You can start making progress. That's going to be a very positive thing. I'm excited actually about that. And on the 24th, there's going to be a full moon in Aries. Now that's going to be in the solar 12th house. So it, it might, um, it, it might bring out some hidden things that um, you weren't even aware of. You know, Aries always has to do with starting things and pioneering things and maybe even being a little courageous or maybe even being a little aggressive or maybe even being a little egotistical. I hate to say that. So it could be one of those things where we need to really be careful on that day of being, you know, a, maybe a little too selfish or, or something like that because Aries is can do that. When I think of Aries, and I'm sorry, Aries, um, but I always think of a child. It's all ch children are. They're very young and inexperienced. So all they can do sometimes is yell. And, and that that happens. And so, you know, when the moon is full, it's, it's usually very um, emotional. And so I can see that being a day where all you can do is yell. And so I hope it's all going to be okay that day and that you really prepare yourself um, for that day, if you know, if you feel that you have to do that, and this may happen even more so when it comes to your career, because during that time there is going to be that um, opposition of Libra uh, in the, the the Mercury and the Sun are going to be in Libra opposing this full moon in, in, in Aries. And so, you know, be aware of this. That usually has to do with your health. That has to do with your, um, uh, your work, uh, healing. Um, you know, is this going to be a positive thing? I don't know. I don't know what that polar axis is going to bring that 12th house, 6th house, polar axis on the solar level. Now on your individual level, because this is a general reading, it may fall in a different house. It may give a different emphasis, but on a solar level, you know, that polar axis is going to be between that 12th house and that sixth house. So it could be the mental, the, you know, the emotional and the actual physical are going to be at odds with each other. And so we need to really be aware of this before this happens, because it will happen or it could, uh, you know, as of the 24th, that's the full moon. And it's going to happen at two degrees Aries. OK, now on the 25th, Chiron retrogrades into Pisces. Or, you know, it enters Pisces at 8, 12 p.m. on the 25th, and it's retrograded there. And that's your, your 11th house. So there's going to be um, a little bit of maybe you'll feel some way about some groups or associations or something, you know, you just maybe friends or you just feel abandoned maybe of that day. Um, so you just be aware that, you know, you may be feeling a little bit sad in the area of friends or feel that you're not making any progress in the area of your friends or someone might let you down. You just might feel a certain way in that area for some reason, because Chiron is usually the area where when things go sad, I, I usually look at Chiron to see where that sadness is. And as you know, Pisces is already in that 11th house. So, you know, wherever Pisces, not Pisces, Neptune, well, it is Pisces because it's your solar 11th house, but Neptune is in Pisces. And this is something because Neptune is the ruler of, of Pisces and it's, it's kind of like this exalted Neptune right now. And it's, you know, trining and, and doing all kinds of things with Jupiter, at least we had that beautiful Jupiter Neptune trying a few days ago. And so, you know, um, just be aware that whenever that happens, um, because, you know, that Jupiter's in the seventh house, the solar seventh house of enemies. So that means you've got lots of enemies. Might not even know it. There's lots of hit. There's lots of opposition. There's lots of enemies right now. That full house in in Aries on the twenty fourth may be uh, opposition 
uh, or, you know, it may be you being sad because of friends, because that's hidden enemies. That's, that's a possibility. But Neptune on the 11th house means, you, you know, you just really might not be aware of everything in the groups and associations and things like that, that you're participating in. And, you know, or you might have this elevated goal amongst you and your, um, your groups and associates that you are uh, doing things with your friends. Um, it, it could just be a very uh, otherworldly metaphysical type of situation. And so that, that's, that's one possibility. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, as I look at this, I think, how would that, per, you know, per take place in the 11th house? And I'll, as a person with their, you know, Taurus moon, I would say for myself, I personally have many groups. I belong to astrology groups and things like that. And I have lots of um, people that I know in those groups. And so it could, you know, per, take place. A form in that way be you know anyway be aware of this and this is one of the um the final um aspects of the month and on the 30th pluto goes direct and we talked about that that's capricorn uh pluto at 18 degrees and 45 seconds it happens at 10 3 p.m eastern standard time uh one o'clock in the morning on the west coast pluto goes direct on september 30th and then, as I mentioned earlier, October 5th, Venus finally does go direct in Scorpio, uh, which is your solar seventh house again. So, you know, all through the month, as I said in the beginning, do not forget that we're in the pre-retrograde shadow of um, with, with Venus. And this is all in that seventh house. I would hate to think somehow we're taken in or duped by false friends or anything like that. So be very cautious this month in the house of friends and hopefully with that beautiful new moon in the fifth house on the ninth that you'll create something wonderful and creative and long lasting on that day. And on the 24th, the full moon in Aries that you beware of hidden enemies and also hidden emotions that are buried or deeply inside or deep hidden resentments. Okay. Well, this is Capricorn Tigris. Adrian Igo of Astrology a Look Inside. I thank you so much for liking and in, in participating and watching me. And also I invite you all to visit me at astrologyalookinside.com where you can learn more about astrology and what I'm up to. Okay. <laughs> thank you all. Much love, much light to all. Have a wonderful September, Taurus. Bye now. <laughs>